So we were able to go from screen A to screen B, and most importantly, we were able to take data from screen A to screen B. Now it's time for us to learn how we do we then, for instance, if we want to create text field so where they can enter something and then when we'll click send back send we're gonna go back to the first screen and then perhaps show uh, somewhere here what we are sending from the other screen from the second screen so essentially do the reverse what we've done here now this is important skills because we are going to be using these skills of course in in our application that we are building the climatic application and these skills are going to be very very useful um, as we continue to learn and to continue to build applications using flutter so it's a very important concept and this is why we're taking our time to nail this all right okay let's do this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, add a button and and another text field here essentially just like what we have here Right. Okay, let's go down here. What I'm going to do for now, uh, I'm going to restructure everything. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. I'm going to say body. Instead of new list tile, I'm going to say new container. For this child, I'm going to say new column. Okay. And for its children, this is what I'm going to add. First of all, our new list tile, just like what we had before. I'm going to put a title, say new text. And then, of course, I'm going to pass the widget dot name. Uh, we have to put inside of curly braces as such. OK, for this to work. Very cool. And then for another children here, so and then I'm going to create another list tile. In this case, for the title, I'm going to say new text, just like what we did before. Let's just go ahead. Controller It's going to be back screen. Uh, let's say call this back text field controller. It's a mouthful, but it works. And at the top here, just like we did before, I'm going to create a bar. A new text edit controller as such. So we have it. That's very good. And like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and add a new list tile again because it organizes everything very nicely. So the title is going to be new flat button. Okay. And for the child, it's going to be the title, so new text. It says send data back. Such. And here is where we are going to do the same thing that we did, except we're going to be passing stuff as such. Now, on pressed here, we're not going to do the same thing that we did here. What we're going to do, we're going to just go ahead and use our navigator because we don't need a router anymore. Because if you think about it, the router has already been established. Now we can just go straight use the navigator. But here's what we're going to do. Notice the difference here. Now I'm going to go ahead and say navigator. But then you notice we can pass a dynamic result and so forth, which means it's an object that of any type that we're passing. So the next parameter that I'm going to argument or parameter that I'm going to be passing here can be anything. So essentially is what is the data that I want to pass along so that the other screen that we're going back to is able to then fetch that data. What is it? Well, in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and say um, the key. Again, what we're going to do here, we're going to pass a map. Remember, a map has key value key. So, right, so I'm going to say here because is a it's a map, I'm going to put inside say enter and finalize this. So now I can go ahead and say for the key, I'm going to say info and for the value is going to be city or it's going to be back controller dot text. So whatever we're getting from our controller, which our which is our text field. So we say pop and as we pop, we want to pass in a dictionary or a map which key, with key info and the value is going to be whatever we are getting from our widget, which is this text field. And that's it. If we save this, 
and go and give it a run. So next, you go next. So we can pass something there and go ahead and say send back and we'll go there. At this point, when we add something and we say send back, send data back, actually the data is being sent, but we're not able to fetch that data yet. Now we have to go back to our first and put together the logic that will say, okay, I'm expecting to receive something from the second screen. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. So what we need to do in our going back to our home screen here or home state rather, what we're going to do is we are going to create a future. What this means is that all of this information that we are receiving, we're saying in the future, we will be expecting to receive something, meaning this home state, this page, this main screen here, first screen, is going to be alert, expecting to receive something in the future. It doesn't know when or how, but it knows that it has to be alert. If it never receives something, then that's totally fine. But just in case, if in the future it receives something, then it needs to be ready for it. That's why we're going to be using the future. So I'm going to say future. And of course, we have an error here because we have to import dart async. There we go. It's going to be future. And I'm going to call this go to next screen method. And inside here, I'm going to pass in a context. We'll see in a second. OK, and I'm going to make this, of course, an async. So what's going to happen inside here? Well, the first thing we're going to do, because we are expecting in the future something, what we're expecting is a map. That's all. Data map, right? I'm going to say map. Call this results. I'm going to call this. Now, why is it a map? Well, if we go back, remember what we said here at the bottom from the second screen. Uh, let's see what we're we passing here. We're passing navigator. We said, look at this. This is a map, right? We have key and we have value. Therefore, we should expect a map, right? So results. Now, here's what I'm going to do. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say await because we are inside of a feature and is an async method. We're going to wait before we do this. Say navigator again. We're going to say dot of. I'm going to pass the context. Ah, context all the time. And we're going to push. What are we pushing? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say new material page route. OK. Now, to be specific, I'm going to pass a generic type here called dynamic, like this. What this means is that this page route here is expecting an object, any type of object, doesn't really matter, okay? This will keep us safe, if you will. Inside of our builder, just like what we did before, pass another builder or build context, call context. We've seen this before. And then this is where I'm going to return a new second, uh, new next screen. Okay, I'm going to finish this like that. Now, here's, here's what I want you to notice here. All of this that we're doing is actually what we've done before here in our router. Now, what are we going to be passing in our second screen? I'm going to just copy this. and put it there. Hmm. Okay. This means then we're going to call this in the future. So we are going to get rid of all of this code here because it's the same thing that we had at the top there. Let's see, get rid of all of this and just pass our go to text. In fact, this has to be inside like that. And then we have to pass our context. Let's put a semicolon. There we go. OK, now let's see. This is can be a little bit confusing. OK, let's let's do this again. So what we're saying here is the following. Because we know that we may receive something from 
the second screen, we create a future method here, future function. In that, we said we created a result because we're, we're expecting to receive a result something, right? A key value uh, pair, a map from our second screen. That means when we are navigating to the second screen, we have to be prepared. Right? It's like when you have a ball, you have somebody else on the other side, you're playing, uh, you throw the ball to them, you know, playing catch, you throw the ball to them, and then you expect them to receive it. So you are alert. Now, the other person may or may not throw the ball back to you, but you have to be ready. Otherwise, if you're not ready, then you can get hit in the face, and then that's not fun, <laughs> right? So that's what are we doing here. So as we throw the ball, as we go, as we navigate to the second page, second screen, we are also attentively waiting for whatever we receive back. That's all we're doing here, folks. There's nothing really magic here. Okay, so as we go there, we still expect to receive something. We are ready to receive something. Now we have to put make it a future because we don't know if that's ever going to happen or not. We, we, we understand that that may happen, but if that doesn't happen, we are still okay. And as we go there, we are passing our text, in this case, the variable name, which is going to be whatever we are passing. Now, in cases when we actually receive something, when they come back, ah, there is the beauty. Because this results will have, if we, if we receive something, should have this information here the info ah which means now we can use this result to do sort of things now we can go ahead and say if look at this i can say for results that has contains right because it's a map i can actually check to see if it contains something what would it contain well it would contain a key called info it has to be the same as we have said to be here in the second screen. Okay, so now <laughs> if results contains info, that means yes, we are good, we have something there, and then we can do something. I can go ahead and say print results, right? Because it's just a map, I can just go ahead and say info, and I can say to string, just like that. I also can say else. I just print nothing. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if this works. I'm going to save this and run. Okay, so everything should be the same. Things that used to work. I'm going to say hello world. Say send to next. We have a hello world. Now let's see if I say hello from second and send back. Let's see. Hello from second. Perfect. It's working. Now let's take a look here. If I go ahead and go back, let's say send next and there's nothing there and I go back. Ah, we get a lot of errors here. Receiver is null, right? This is because the reason we're getting all this error is because we're just looking at results if it has the key info. But what we should do, we should also look to see if results is null or not. Because that's very important. In this case, the result was null. Why? Because we didn't add anything here. So when we go back, this result is null, right? So we should say if results is not right null and result contains info then we are going to be able to do all this stuff so if you save this and give a run we should now be able to see all of this working okay let's say hello there this should work fine let's just go back with a null if you look nothing broke now now that we have this result we can set it on our first screen right we can go ahead and create another text or whatever else we want but in this case if i wanted i can go ahead and actually invoke the name fill controller and add this text that we're receiving from the first second screen right i can go ahead and say 
name field controller, right? Say dot text. I'm gonna just go say is equal to results, and it's gonna be the info key. Just to string just to be safe, right? Let's save this and see what's going to happen. Okay, uh, let's give it a quick refresh run so that everything is set up for us. Okay, I'm gonna say hello there, go to second screen, there we go, hello there, working. Hello back, let's send. Look at that, it says hello back, right? Because we are indeed getting the information from our second screen back. Oh, fun, okay? So second time, next, going to second time, I am responding to you. Look at that, I'm responding to you. Ah, very, 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 very nice and exciting. I know this has been a little derail from our main goal, which was to create, which is creating climatic. But I wanted really to include this topic so that you really grasp this idea because it's very, very important. As you build your applications, you have to understand how to go from screen A to screen B. But most importantly, as we go through screens, we most often want to pass data along. And this, my friend, is how you pass data to and from a screen, okay? Now, before you move forward, going back, because in the next video, we're gonna go back and start going back to the climatic application that we're building. I want you to uh, pause for, for a little bit and rewatch these two videos if this makes no sense. Yes, I know this may be a little overkill, but I really, really want you to understand this if this is not making a lot of sense. And you can always ask questions, of course, but do me a favor, go back and rewatch these two videos. And on top of that, think of just a fun little application you can create that will include this topic, what we just learned here, because I want it to solidify in your brain on how to do this. It's not about uh, memorizing it, but it's about understanding why and how things work. And that's the, and that's how we actually gain the knowledge. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next where we'll go back and continue to work on the climatic application. Wonderful. I'll see you next.